I'm William O'Flaherty. Welcome to the Knowing and Understanding C.S. Lewis YouTube channel. This is a very special edition of the show as I recently returned from the opening weekend of the second run of the Horse and His Boy play at the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. The play is a production of Logos Theater from South Carolina. The play runs in D.C. through August 6, 2023. I had the honor of speaking with two very special individuals associated with the play just after their 2 o'clock performance on June 24th. Here's that interview. I have the lead cast uh, playing Erebus and uh, Shasta, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Liliana Groth and I play Erebus in The Horse and His Boy. And I am Brendan Stratton and I play Shasta in The Horse and His Boy. Were you involved in the uh, first run of the show and if you were, is it any different? than it uh, was before? I was not involved in the original production. However, I was able to play in the summer run we had back at the Academy, and then in the last run we had here in DC. Um, it has changed quite a bit in the fact that each character has been able to go deeper into the meaning of the story, and I feel like the message is really being proclaimed even stronger in this run than it has before. Um, yes, so I've been in actually every single um, run of The Horse and His Boy, but the very first one, I played young Shasta and now I'm getting to play, I have the privilege of playing older Shasta, so it, yes, so it has changed a good bit. So um, the very first time you really get to learn your character and then every single time you um, do it again you get to kind of dive deeper into it and get to really, really know and get along with your character. Well speaking of the uh, character development, first of all how familiar were you with the story before you did the, uh, the acting here and then how much more do you feel that you understand the character now? Well I grew up with the Narnia books. We have always read them on car trips and at home and so I feel like I am great friends with this characters in this story. I deeply connect with Erebus. Um, I feel like she's such an authentic character for the audience to see and being able to portray her has been such a blessing. To be able to see her character arch from the beginning of the show as she's a spunky and feisty and quite a bratty character, it's been uh, and then also to be able to meet Aslan um, and to have her humbled and see that it was Aslan's providence all along that brought her where she was. It's been quite an interesting and uh, special experience to be able to portray her on the stage. So yes, I've grown up pretty much all my life reading and listening to the books. So every single car trip we take, we're listening to the audio dramas and it's, it's yes. So um, my whole life I've grown up with it So and I really have gotten along with the characters and gotten to know them. and. Probably my favorite scene is the Aslan scene. It's a very deep scene with Aslan where Shasta thinks he's really a nobody and he doesn't really know who he is because he thinks that he's the son of this man, but then he realizes that he's not and he doesn't know who he is and he just, uh, he's at a very down point, like a very um, low point in his life. And then Aslan comes to him and says, and talks to him and says that he's known him all of his life and he's been with him and helping him and guiding him. And um, that's probably my favorite scene and th that's the scene that I really connect the most to Shasta so I really enjoy that scene. And did you mention a favorite scene? Mine would probably also be his Aslan scene. Really any part that Aslan is in is probably my favorite scene. C.S. Lewis was such a brilliant writer in the way that the story never gets old. No matter how many times that we're going to perform it, Aslan's lines hit me differently each night. Um, so he is really a powerful character. So any part that he is on the stage as he's a representative of Christ, it um, has been a brilliant to be able to act off of the puppets and to be able to see his part on stage. For the day of a production like today, what is it like in terms of preparing? Is there any typical routine you do, whether it be two performances like today or just one? Uh, how do you prepare on the day? So to be able to have two performances on stage, we have to have a lot of energy. So of course we have a PT here um, who helps us with nutrition and such as that, but then also the spiritual side of things, to be able to go onto a stage and perform and battle for the Lord twice a day, it takes a lot of your spiritual energy as well as your physical energy. So we make sure to have a meeting before each production to be able to pray together and to focus on really what is the message of this play, um, especially in a city that is dark as this and in a country that is dark. We are a, need to be able a light for those people in the audience and so we strive to be that light for the audience members so being able to come together in the beginning of each performance and to pray together really helps to set the focus of our mind on what the message is and how to further put it out there 
So we have a meeting at the beginning of each play, so we talk about what we need to do better, and also we pray together. Um, and then we normally go um, by ourselves and pray around the stage. And so at the beginning of this, we've had a lot of a, a lot of things that are happening, like with sicknesses and certain things like that. So it's really just an attack on us. Um, we're trying to shine the light of Jesus Christ, but a lot of attacks. So praying really helps us get through it. And so before we um, had, we did a performance once every single day and twice on Saturday, and we had off on Sunday. But now we're doing it twice the days that we're performing. So it's a, it takes a lot more energy each day because before we we did one performance, then we got to sleep and regain our energy. But now we're doing it twice each day, every single day. So it's um it's very fun. So it takes a lot of energy from you, but we're just praying before each performance, and just it really gives us our energy back and just learning to grow closer every single day, closer to the Lord. So tell us about working with the uh, puppets. What is that like? And of course, maybe describe for those who haven't yet seen the play or any of the still images, what is it like to work with the uh, puppets? Well, I have grown up all my life around horses. So um, walking in and seeing these huge, massive puppets um, who are so lifelike, it, it has been pretty crazy to be on stage. And then sometimes I will forget that they're not real. And I'll touch them and be, oh, this is a real horse. No, it's a puppet. So they are fantastic. They are creatively made. Um, Justin Swain is a brilliant, brilliant puppet master where he created them so that we can ride on the puppets. The puppets can get down and up. There's massive chase scenes between a huge lion and the two horses. So it is pretty fantastic to be able to act off of um, such a creative masterpiece. And then also to be able to have a puppeteer at the head, there's three people inside each of the puppets. So for them to be able to act off of us, um, it's like acting off of a true person to have real feelings and interp. And so it's been pretty amazing to be able to act off of them. Yes, so um, they are they are amazing puppets. They're they're like real horses. They're six feet tall, and it's just really really fun to act off of them. It's really hard to act off of a piece of foam, but then when the puppeteers get in them, it's, it's like not just a piece of foam. It's a full puppet, and then when the people get inside of them, they really make it come to life. So you'd think that it'd be hard to act off of like an object or something, but the puppeteers really make them come to lives and give makes them have emotions and feelings and it's really it's really a blessing to get to act off of that because looking at other plays people do um, the other puppets people do it's it would be very hard to act off of them but it's just really easy with the brilliant puppeteers yeah so uh, to tell us about especially uh, you have a close connection with the uh, the one who does the voice of um, Aslan Yes, sir. So my grandfather is the man who founded the ministry, um, the Academy of Arts. So all my life I have grown up with the Academy. My first play, I was nine days old, and my mom carried me on for um, a performance. So my grandfather plays um, the voice of Aslan. He passed away um, about two, I think two years now. So it's gone by really quickly. But we, we all really miss him, but it just... Every time um, I get to that scene, it's acting and acting, and then when I hear his voice, it just... It really hits me, and it's. I don't really have to act very much for that scene. I just tears come, and I just have to. It feels like talking with my grandfather again. So it's it's very much a blessing. And then any experiences since uh, either just now getting settled in as it's opening weekend, but uh, uh, going about the town, any experiences um, with the uh, city? We have had an amazing response from the audience members. A really cool story as my mom and I were going over across the street to the uh, garage for our car, we were stopped by a security guard on the road who said, you have to know this there, everyone who keeps coming across the road to come get their car has been talking and talking about the th show that is over there. Um, and they say, you have to get your tickets, you have to come and see it. There are some who are already saying they're going to come back and get more tickets. Um, but he really shared something, it, it hit pretty hard, that he said, such in such a city of darkness that they have to live in every day, it really does come as a blessing to them that they get to see a light that is shining from the show and from the message that even as the people are going home they are still processing um, the words of Aslan and the message behind the play. Yes so driving around DC it's it's very um, it's a very dark city but people have said thank you so much for coming thank you for coming you've been such a light in this city and it's really just a blessing to be able to be here and give this um, perform this play and the, they said thank you for the quality, just like the quality of other um, performances, other plays, like they could have um, good quality, but just the message that's inside of this 
play. It's just very, that Aslan is always with you. It's very much a blessing to be able to be here and to perform for all these people. Any final thoughts? So thank you so much for coming. We have enjoyed to be able to speak with you, and we hope that you all will come and see the show. Thank you for coming to the play, yes. I hope all the people listening want to come and buy tickets. I hope you enjoyed my interview with the lead cast from The Horse and His Boy Play. The play is a production of Lagos Theater and runs in the D.C. area at the Museum of the Bible through August 6, 2023. Again, I'm William O'Flaherty. My podcast of over 10 years is called All About Jack, and on YouTube, my channel is Knowing and Understanding C.S. Lewis. Be sure to check out a short feature called The Latest on C.S. Lewis that highlights timely and timeless news and information. Check the description or show notes for links to what was mentioned in the show today. Finally, everything I do related to Lewis is centered at the website EssentialCSLewis.com. And in case you didn't know, I've written two Lewis-themed books. The misquotable C.S. Lewis was released in 2018. It examines 75 quotations credited to him that he either didn't write or paraphrases of something he did or without the context could be misunderstood. Then in 2016, my enhanced study guide to the Screwtape Letters came out. It's called C.S. Lewis Goes to Hell. Thanks again for listening. Please consider liking and sharing this program with others.